So welcome everyone. I'm Amy Robach with Good Morning America, ABC News. I don't know how much we were introduced already, so I'll just go ahead and assume that you don't know. Uh, and we are very excited to have all of you with us here today talking about a very important topic, of course, women entrepreneurship and the power of social media and how we can all make a difference and learning from people who are doing just that right here on the panel with me. And uh, you've got your microphone on, Rose. It's great <laughs> to see you here. And it's interesting because Rose, obviously, a uh, you might have seen her in a few films before, uh, a very accomplished actress. And I found it fascinating that it was a comedic role, The Neighbors, with Seth Rogen, that drew you to a very important cause. Tell me, tell me what awakening you had on a seemingly, you know, light, fun movie. You came across a very dark, serious subject. I did. Yeah, it was um, a film called Neighbors, and it was all it was all surrounding a fraternity. And so I did a lot of. Um, I wasn't in the fraternity, obviously, but um, <laughs> believe it or not. And. Uh, uh, I'm Australian and we don't really have a fraternity culture in Australia where I'm from and um, so I did a lot of research as a result and um, ended up sort of you know discovering some pretty horrific statistics about sexual assault on, um, on college campuses and then I got involved with the campaign um, called It's On Us which is um, being headed up by um, a, a couple of fantastic people, Rachel Cohen, Gerald, one of them who is here today um, from the Public Foundation and um, I did a PSA in September along with um, Kerry Washington, John Hamm, Commons, and other celebrities, um, sort of, you know, this, you know, the idea of ending sexual assault, obviously, on, on college campuses. And raising yeah. awareness, which raising is obviously awareness. key, yeah. key, key. Yeah. Now, Leslie Seymour with Moore Magazine. I know you've been in publishing for most of your life and, well, your entire career. Exactly. Yeah. And you've been a strong advocate for women and women's health issues, specifically, which is a cause near and dear to my heart as well. Yeah. I don't think it is. I can pass you the mic right here. How about this? Until we can do it. Why don't I? Okay. So um, I've been in publishing my whole life, and one of the wonderful things that I get to do is move the world with words. And I found my voice. Um, I started out in the fashion and beauty business. Um, the first thing I was able to do was for women in need for the cosmetic executive women, a friend of mine was running it and she had all these shelters she was supporting and she said, I have to raise a million dollars for this shelter and I said, wow, I was a beauty editor at Glamour and I said, I've got all these products that are piling up in our, in our closet and what if we sold them for a dollar instead of just giving them away? And that became what is now indoctrinated as the beauty beauty editor sample sale. I have to say that was the best thing I ever did and it continues to go on long after me. I haven't had such a good idea after that, but I've done a million. If anybody has another idea like that, I'll take it and implement it. Um, but I've done um, innumerable stories about domestic violence, about health issues, about women abroad. Um, when I ran Mary Claire, I took Drew Barrymore with me to work with the World Food Program in Africa. And I really, truly believe that if you, you know, if you have a celebrity involved, I mean, it is so wonderful to have all of you guys here because that gets everybody's attention. I can do a lot, but when we put your faces into it, suddenly everybody pays attention. And they want to get involved, they want to belong, they want to have participation. And um, uh, I do the same thing at more with many different causes. So too bad I'm not Rose. I would like to be Rose, but I'm not. <laughs> well, and another... Can you hear me? You can. Okay, great. Uh, Quavon uh also uh, star power, soon to be the star of Annie. I've seen the film. Everyone should see it. It's fantastic. But Quavon Janae, you auditioned for your first Hollywood film at the age of five. Most of us would never have the guts to do that. Tell me what inspired you or what gave you the confidence to walk in there and wow everybody. Well, I wanted to try something new because my mom asked me if I wanted to go to the audition, and I said yes. And then after that, I really liked it because I like becoming a new character every time. And so part of your mission is to reach all of those young women and, and boys and girls out there who might otherwise be afraid to follow their dreams. What is your advice? What are your words of wisdom at the age of 11? Always stay confident, and it doesn't matter what other people say because it's not their goal, it's yours.
Gabriella, thank you for being here with us. Uh, Miss Universe, we should mention. And your platform is HIV, AIDS awareness, education and prevention, specifically for women and girls. What are you, what are you trying, what's your message to women out there about staying healthy? I mean, education obviously is key and, and, and access to all of these women worldwide has never been easier. No. Well, first of all, good morning. Um, yes, my main cause as a Miss Universe is working with uh, the awareness, HIV and AIDS awareness. And I have the lucky and the blessed to maybe hand two languages, Spanish and English. We have a huge Latin community in the U.S. and international. So that gave me the opportunity to hear stories and share experience with the people who is living with AIDS and HIV. So as a woman, young woman, this platform as Miss Universe helped me to promote awareness to create conscious, to reduce the stigma and discrimination. And this is it's something that is, I realized during this time working is a lack of education that we can find in the schools, that we can find in our society. So my message to the women is for mother, sister, auntie, no matter how taboos or prohibited will be the conversation about sexual education, just do it. We need to increase the education. We need to spread the measures. Even if you're girls or younger, I think it's, it's safe to talk about healthy sex relationship. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not easy because, well, as a Latin community, we have a lot of taboos and a lot of things that we don't want to talk with our kids. But we need to do it because that guarantee a healthy life for a long term. And be a young woman, uh, give me that opportunity and be a Miss Universe. I create this awareness, and I use social media a lot, mm -hmm. trying to promote education, trying to give like short messages, and trying to let it know the population of young women and girls that it's people outside that can help you. It's people outside that can provide you um, education, that can give you advices, that can provide you medication. It's a lot of people that can help you with the psychological advices. So I think we are such a strong generation and we need to support each other, no matter your condition, no matter how many taboos and prohibited is our topics as, as HIV and AIDS. Um, I really think this is a bless. And now we have the social media and I try to use my voice and I speak for the people that don't have the opportunity to do it. Well, Gabriella, that is fantastic. And what was so interesting is I was listening to you talk about your specific cause, your platform about ending sexual violence. When you think about all the things you said, you talked about community, connection, access, education, and the power of social media to unite us all, and then to have women like all of you be the voice where people, women out there can say, all right, you know, if she can do it, I can do it. I mean, I felt that way about the whole reason why I got my mammogram on Good Morning America was to try and increase awareness about early detection for breast cancer. And when you realize the platform you have and the impact it can have, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And, and Rose, to that point, I know with uh, the It's On Us initiative uh, that the White House has spearheaded that you're a part of, how important is social media to the cause? And what, what impact have you seen using social media? There's been an uh, incredible response on social media. They've had um, over 100,000 people do the pledge on the It's On Us um, website. They've had over 120,000 hits on Facebook interactions. They've had over 2.6 million people watch the PSA. It was the highest watched PSA the weekend after it was released. Um, over 2 million um, interactions on Twitter, I believe. So it's been phenomenal in terms of the social media. Do you believe that social media has become the voice and, and really the outlet for social change in our time? I, absolutely, yeah. I mean, there's countless examples of that. And I think this campaign in particular is really, really targeting that as well. And Leslie, I know that um, you were a leader from the start as well. What gave you the confidence to lead? To lead? Um, lead. I, I guess I'm just a, a natural born bossy person, as my <laughs> husband says. You know, that whole thing about, you know, disown bossy and all that, I think we should actually own it. I think if your child or anybody you know has a bossy tendency, say, that's great, you've got management potential. <laughs> and you have to control it. But that's what's wonderful, because when you realize, I mean, Amy, like, like you in, in the media, what you can do to turn the world around by either showing something that happens directly to you or getting people on board, it can, you know, 
just part of it is social media, but there's print, there's TV. When you employ all those parts of media together, you can literally turn the Titanic around. And, and we've done that many, many times with many issues. We do a lot of primary research, things like that, to get words out there about domestic violence, about health issues, um, breast cancer issues as well. And you can really have an impact. I get letters all the time from people saying, Thank God you wrote about that. My doctor was saying to me that that was not my issue. I ripped it out, went to him, and he went, oh, okay, and turned out it was. Wow, the power of the A written lot. word. It, yeah, it's incredible. And Kovanjane, we were talking earlier about, you know, back there, actually, the power of social media to do good, to enact change, to connect, and yet at the same time, it can also really hinder people when it's used for negativity. How do you overcome even as, as a young star rising through the world of Hollywood, how do you overcome any limits that may be placed on you by others? Um, I really don't look at the negativity. I always look at the positive because who doesn't love positive? <laughs> uh, <laughs> very, very, very well put. Uh, <laughs> Gabriella, I want to ask you about what is the mission of the Miss Universe Court Aid Relief Fund? Because you talked about um, how important international topics are to those of us here in America. Yeah. Well, maybe a couple of you are not in, maybe you don't know about this, but Miss Universe created a special fund from the people of the Philippines. Uh, this people was affected uh, one day before I was crowned Miss Universe. So for me, it's an honor and a pleasure to be part of this initiative to help the community of the Philippines to, be, to become resilient. Um, I'm involved in the part. I, I, went, I traveled to the Philippines. I met the community. I spent time with them. And I love this day because it's about entrepreneurship. It's about empower. It's about encourage generations. So Corday Fund and Miss Universe, we are trying to encourage the community of the Philippines to become resilient to become more stronger community, to be able to um, confront for the future tragedies. Hope no. Um, so we are working trying to give this, not just the money to rebuild and build back better. Uh, we are trying to provide them the skills, the workshop, um, the education, and the knowledge that this community is special need to overcome this tragedy. So you can see young kids actually is, is, is spoken is perfectly English. Um, young women trying to look for activities. They generate money and they can be sustainable for a long term. So I'm really happy because this day is about encourage and I think it, I feel the honor and the privilege to at least help a little bit this community and hopefully using the social media we are trying every day to encourage more people to become friendly of this topic and continue help Corday, Miss Universe Fund because it's a lot of things going on in the world every day. Sometimes we forget that it's still people that need our help. So it's nice to have the voice, as I said before, to the people that doesn't have the opportunity. Yes, absolutely. That is uh, one of the tremendous gifts of social media. And Rose, tell us what today's youth, any you know, young people out here can do to help spread your message. What are you asking um, college-aged, even high school-aged kids to do and Specifically, how do we create a different environment? How do we enact change? Oh, well, there's many things you can do. I mean, a lot of the colleges, um, over 53 colleges, have created their own PSA um, of its own arsenal, speaking at the camera and saying, you know, it's very similar to the, to the original one. Um, there's many events going on at colleges this week. Um, the, the new PSA was launched, um, which they're calling the bystander intervention, about if you see something, say something. I mean, the statistics are really pretty terrifying that one in five women will you know, suffer sexual assault on a college campus and one in 16 men and um, they're just, uh, it's unacceptable. Oh, that's, I mean, it's so underreported too. It, and uh, less than 13% report it and it's just, it's unacceptable. So this, the, the new PSA is about, you know, creating a bystander intervention. If you see something, say something. If, you know, if you see, uh, you know, alcohol is obviously always involved. So just trying to stop it before, before it, it happens. And, and taking you know. the stigma out of it. And, Absolutely, taking the stigma out of it. It's a, you know, it's a very, it can be an intimidating culture, and it, um, there's a lot of shame around it, and you know, people don't want to report it generally because 
it's a very it's a it's a very painful thing to go through. So um, so it's about ending that and um, and uh, and yeah, the colleges have been incredible what they're doing uh, this week. It's the National Week of Action, so it's um, it's really inspiring already. So you know, there's yeah, yeah, it's, it's really wonderful. Because so much of what we're talking about, especially when it comes to women's issue issues, seems to have you know some sort of stigma attached to it. You know. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we weren't talking about it. And just talking about it makes all the difference. Can I, can I jump yes. in on that for you? Um, what's interesting about that exact thing, I have a daughter who just went to college two years ago, and one of the things that I discovered as I was looking for schools, I was horrified by this whole subculture. You can get a rating for a school about everything from what people wear on campus, but you know, to are they preppy enough? To, but you get nothing about what's going on with sexual assault on campus. Mm. So it's piqued my interest and I kept saying, how can my readership, who are women like you, they're entrepreneurs, they're CEOs, CMOs, CFOs, they're women of action, how can they get involved? And in February, we're actually doing a piece which is about taking, uh, it's about five or six women who never talked about it before. This has been going on since our generation went to school. It's just it was not called that. It was not called rape. It was called, oh, those are the slutty girls. Or you got too drunk and you right. deserved it. And Well, and that's, that's part of the stigma that we're hoping to stop is that all my friends, especially the ones who have only boys, are saying, oh, it's all those girls in their slutty clothes and they're all getting drunk. And my point is, we didn't wear slutty clothes and we weren't binge drinking back then and guess what had happened? So what's really fascinating is that what we discovered in our research is you can go back and report those rapes now mm. and change the college campus numbers so that the, our point is this has been happening all along. So we want to show solidarity with the, with the young girls today and saying it has to stop because it's not different. It was just put under the rug. And you can actually go out and report the rape from 35 years ago now and change that college statistics. And so a lot of our readers who knew that were very empowered by that. We're hoping a lot of women are going to go out and do that. So much of, of, of our strength as women is supporting one another and not putting in the judgment. And Kovajane, you're a young woman. Tell me what girls can do to help each other. Um, they could always be there by their side if they have anything going on at home or at school or just in floating around in their head, they could always be there for each other because they know what it's like because they're the same genre and everything's the same with them both. So I know that part of what your message is about entrepreneurship, and you're 11, I don't even know if my 11 year old knows what entrepreneurship is, but why is it important to you to help get the word out to young young girls, young boys, that financial independence is important. Having goals are important. Uh, having a life plan is important. Um, I think it's really important because once you have a goal, you keep pushing. And as you keep pushing, you get better. And you get there. And I promise you, you will get there. Because... <laughs> Don't you love the confidence? <laughs> it's fantastic. Well, it's really something that you should keep going for because promise, I promise you that you will get there. I believe it. I believe it. If Vajene says it's happening, it's happening. Gabrielle, I know that female education and entrepreneurship are also important to you. And uh, it's obviously a huge step in eradicating poverty. And how do you encourage women in a developing and often male-dominated country to stand up? Well, it's a sad reality, but it's a male business ministry in the world. Um, I think it, the first step if, is get out of our comfort zone. Sometimes we think that we are not capable. Sometimes we think that we cannot achieve the same goal that a man have. Uh, and sometimes we have a lot of fears. But in this, teen, in this in the, sorry, my Spanish, in the moment in which you can be able to overcome your fears, you became a stronger person. And sometimes as a woman, we share the same fears, we share the same insecurities. And the, my way to encourage is trying to look something that we can share as a woman, something we are, we are the same sex. We, we share experience, we share emotions. Try to maybe look for the moment in our life, in our days, that we can talk to each other, like family, co-workers, uh, 
in the school, I don't know, just to share experience. And you will realize that you have the same problems, you will realize that you have the same fears. And you can work together because we are a team. We are working for the same team. I think it, I, in my opinion, a couple of years ago, I think women just tap each other. And now, no, it's not the case. We are trying to help each other. So my opinion is trying to encourage, trying to look for biggest goal. I think if, in my case, I dream big. I dreamed to become Miss Universe. And even though I was in a pageant with 85 contestants, I was never competing. I was always trying to support, to encourage, to make better the other girls around me. And that's make me feel better at the end of the day. So no matter which your community or your, the people who is around you, is trying to encourage each other with the simple things and you realize that you have something in common to, to achieve. And I know that uh all of you up on this uh, dais have all accomplished amazing, incredible things and are still uh, doing all of those wonderful things. So for women who are uh, thinking, well, of course they can do all that because look who they are and look the access they have and, and look at the reach they have, you know, what can I do? I'd like to go down the line and ask each of you, what, what, what would you say to the average you know, working mom or working woman, uh, what can she do to, to make her life better and the, and the lives of those she loves and care about better? Um, I think it's, such a, it's so personal for everybody, everybody's life and everybody's choice of how, you know, whether you're a say to mom or you're, or you're uh, you know, whatever your, whatever your sort of life choice is. But I think, you know, the, the events like this and cultural shifts, like it's, it's on us about changing stigmas around women and uh, I, th I think the really, really important sort of t changing the cultural dialogue, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm really, really proud to be here today to be a part of it. We're happy you're here too, mm -hmm. Leslie. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I really have been a very firm believer in what one woman can do. Um, that's what the sort of thread goes from my very beginning. I was a writer, um, lowly writer, and thought, okay, words can change the world. And then I found my way to different places where I could actually use that to change the world. I mean, I think especially today now that anybody can start a website, anybody can start a social media movement. Um, the, as an example, I'll give you a young woman named Shannon Watts who was a mom in Indiana, and when Newtown happened, she said, I'm so outraged, there must be a Facebook page that has other women like me and moms who are saying, this is it, it's enough, we gotta take the guns out of the crazies' hands. Lo and behold, there was not. She went online that day, opened a, a Facebook page, and the rest is history. She got it like 180,000 people to follow her then. She ended up cook, you know, hooking up with Bloomberg, took over um, his Mayors Against Guns, and now she has this giant organization that she's running. She was a mom, and she was just outraged. So I say open your minds, open your, um, you know, your ideas, put them out there. There are people like you. What's wonderful about the world today is you can connect with whatever your passion is. There's thousands of people who share that passion. And even if it's a small passion, put it out there and you can organize and you can have a, a say. Um, there, are, you know, there are just so many different ways that you can connect using social media and create a movement. I totally believe in it. Um, our magazine's all about those kinds of women who came from nowhere. And, and believe me, you guys are not even nowhere. You're so far right. above that, that you can move from there very easily. Um, I feel like if you work hard enough and you climb that mountain and you get to the tippy top that you will find the golden star that you were looking for. So if you find that golden star, then I'm pretty sure you can do anything. I like your Confucius-like uh, sayings. They're, they're very short and simple, but man, they pack a punch. <laughs> uh, um, I think as... Uh, as you say, we have a, a stronger and powerful tool that is the social media to spread the message that we feel passionate about it. Um, I realize in my country, Venezuela is struggling in political and social and economic situation. And besides to feel sad because I'm far away from home, I feel powerful because I have the internet, I have the social media to support my country, to send messages of hope, of happiness, to continue being connected with my people because we share the same passion. Um, sometimes people think that for, for me and Miss Universe, we're just trying to, to find the world peace. And this is a beautiful message. But no, we work really hard to, to support different causes. 
um, to support the Philippines, to support my country, to support a lot of organizations. So I found my passion this year, and hopefully I can, I would dream big. I want to become a humanitarian in my future. I want to change the world. I want to do something big. I'm dreaming big because I know if I, as, as you say, if I push harder, I will do it. So I think the message they say is just dream big, continue empowering and encourage each other. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to, to achieve our goals. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm a person of, of faith, and I really believe that if I can dream and I can make it happen. So use the tool that, you, that we have. Use the social media to, to share your passion. I try to use mine to share my passion. Yeah, it, believe me, it's a lot of people who share the same. Yes, and, and we're going to open it up for questions in just a moment, but I wanted to share real quickly how impacted I was this year by social media with, with meeting uh, a 17-year-old, Malala Yousafzai. This is a, a girl who said to me, which will always remain with me, the Taliban tried to silence the voice of one girl and instead heard the voices of hundreds of thousands with her hashtag stronger than she faces fear each and every day and the reach that she's had in letting women know that they do have a voice and they have a right to education no matter which country they live in no matter what religion they practice it's it's 17 year olds like that and 11 year olds like this one right here who are changing the world and so i'm just proud to be a, able to tell some of their stories each and every day i have a series hashtag girl power, and we're really seeking out women around the globe who are making a difference, uh, women of all ages, inspiring so many people who don't have a voice. So I know that you all are making that your mission too in your own unique ways, so we, we thank you for all of that.